Thank you for making time to pray with us. We hope our Marian devotion will inspire you to be more spiritual during the week and prayerful. Let us also make Saturdays a day for Mary, our mother. God calls us in various ways and it is important for us to read the sign of the times. Sometimes our health issues may cause us great anxiety and we feel that we are running out of time. Whatever it is, the way God calls us through Jesus is always Peace be with all of you. I'm standing outside our beautiful church doing this devotion. And so let's begin together knowing that Mary prays with us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, we are truly grateful to God for the many blessings we have received from Him to the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Let us once more ask her to join us, be with us and pray with us. Once again, wonderful intentions that we must pray for because you are the praying community that is global. We begin with these wonderful intentions. World Zoonosis Day is observed on July the 6th every year to raise awareness about zoonotic diseases and their impact on both human and animal health. The term Zoonosis refers to infectious diseases that can be transmitted from animals to humans and vice versa. Zoonosis is derived from the Greek words for animal and zoo, indicating a state or condition of infectious diseases of humans that originate in animals. Rabies is a common zoonotic disease together with cat scratch disease, ringworm and valley fever. Rabies is a vaccine-preventable zoonotic viral disease affecting the central nervous system. And did you know that coronaviruses are zoonotic? As a matter of fact, several known coronaviruses are circulating in animals that have not yet infected humans. We pray for all those suffering from zoonotic diseases, that medical aid is available quickly and that government and scientists do their best to prevent the spread of all zoonotic diseases. 
for this we pray. Mother Mary, pray with us. World Population Day is an annual event observed on July the 11th every year, which seeks to raise awareness of global population issues. Since the middle of the 20th century, the world has experienced unprecedented population growth. The world's population more than tripled in size between 1950 and 2020. It took hundreds and thousands of years for the world population to grow to 1 billion. Then in just another 200 years or so, it grew sevenfold. In 2011, the global population reached the 7 billion mark. It stands at almost 7.9 billion in 2021 and is expected to grow to around 8.5 billion by 2030. We have to understand that more people means an increased demand for food, water, housing, energy, health care, transportation and much more. And all of that consumption contributes to ecological degradation, increased conflicts and a higher risk of large-scale disasters like pandemics. The Church insists that married couples be open to the gift of children from God. However, that calls for greater responsibilities in family planning and the rights of a child to proper food, education and shelter. We pray for all people in the third world that suffer from overpopulation issues and the unjust distribution of goods, equal opportunity and services. We pray for our future generation that they will inherit a world of justice and equal opportunities. For this we pray. Mother Mary, pray with us. Knowing the potential danger of the Taliban, a young girl of 11 was shot in the head by the Taliban because for her, education is the fundamental right of everyone, especially girls. She wanted to show the world how cruel and atrocious it was for the Taliban to deprive girls of their right to education. Education is fundamental to the advancement of survival and prosperity and is therefore crucial to ensuring equality. Malala Yousafzai is her name. She inspired many young women and girls to convey the message that no one should suppress them and their liberties. She left a long-lasting legacy to all girls that you should not be silenced by anyone. In 2013, she spoke at the United Nations and called for unrestricted education for all children. In 2014, she was the youngest to ever be awarded a Nobel Peace Prize. We pray for all young girls that they be given access to education, fundamental rights and a holistic formation as they have a vital role to play in families, society and the world. For them, we pray. Mother Mary, pray with us. Last June the 14th, a ship capsized in the Mediterranean Sea, sinking off the coast of Greece. Despite a rescue mission that saved over 104 people, 500 more people were missing and feared to be dead. Reports suggest that 400 to 750 people had packed the fishing boat that capsized. We lift up the families of all the victims that they find closure, healing and peace despite the loss of loved ones and friends. We pray for the survivors 
that they will be able to overcome their trauma and misfortune. We pray for all those who played a part in the transportation and illegal trafficking of innocent migrants. May they be brought to justice and be accountable for the devastating loss of precious lives, especially of innocent children. We pray that greed, corruption and exploitation of poor people cease to be a means for profit and power. For this we pray. Mother Mary, pray with us. Let's sum up all our intentions and also pray for the intentions of our Holy Father by praying the Lord's prayers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It's time now for your letters. Thank you for writing in and using our website and the apps that are provided. I begin with Thanksgiving. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, I thank you for your guidance in helping me complete a project that got out of hand. You were the perfect example of trust and to wait on the Lord. I will always lift up my anxiety to the Lord in future. Thank you for helping me. Dear Mother Mary, please thank God with me for the little miracles that come my way which I often take for granted. Each time I prayed, the Lord surprised me in ways I did not expect. God is good all the time from your loving Son. Dear Mother Mary, I thank God for my good health although I am old. I thank God for my caring children, even though they do not visit me as often as I would like them to. Protect them from all danger. Now, some letters of petition. Dearest Mother Mary, please intercede to our Lord Jesus Christ for my eldest granddaughter, who is having fever and a sore throat, as her overseas trip to Phuket with her friends is coming soon from your anxious Catholic son. Dear Mother Mary, I live with toxic people who love to destroy each other. Some are filled with envy when their friends are praised and appreciated. They seem to do anything within their means to bring the other person down. Mother, help to remove all the ne negativity that surround me from your loving child. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, please help and pray for my children. Help them change their lifestyle and guide them in the right path of life. Protect them from addiction and to return to the Catholic faith once again. I pray for family unity as my family is very divided from your Catholic son. Dear Mother of Perpetual Help, I pray for a Good Shepherd sister who is ailing and not well. The sisters have sacrificed so much. I pray that God will reward them for all their good works and sacrifices. Bless their apostolate and their outreach programs to women and young girls especially. From your loving child. Dear Mother Mary, my friend was a victim of a scam. She is very depressed because she lost much of her life savings. Comfort her and ask the Holy Spirit to help her to be more discerning and wise in the future. Dear Mary, the war in the Ukraine not only affected the citizens, but the entire world, as there is a shortage of a lot of essentials, especially food. Dear Mother Mary, I pray for all the animals and people affected by the forest fires and heat waves in so many countries. 
I lift up to you the elderly who are affected the most. I pray for the safety of firefighters on land and in the air. I pray for the badly affected environment and those in healthcare trying to cope with the emergencies from your loving children. With all these petitions, knowing that Mary listens to us, with confidence we pray the prayer of confidence together. Mother of Perpetual Help, we come to you and place our trust in you. You are a mother of mercy. You are called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then our refuge and our hope. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to us poor sinners. We bless and thank God for giving us this confidence in you. In the past we have so often sinned, but with your help we can conquer, and you will help us if we pray to you. In all our temptations, may we always turn to you and say, Mary, help me. Let me never lose my God. Amen. Let us share with Mary her prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He put forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. And you are our mother also. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our heart for giving us Mary to be our mother. She is so loving, so thoughtful, so understanding and so kind. We thank you for her. Amen. Let us sing a hymn to honour Mary today. For those who are lost and seek her intercession, Mary will show us the way. No man can live as an island Journeying through life alone Since we are most loved by a mother Jesus gave us his own Be with us Mary along the way Guide every step we take Jesus, your loving soul, come with us, Mary. Rejection, Mary stood by the cross. How can a mother desert her son? She'll also stand by us. Be with us, Mary, along the way. Guide every step we take. Lead us to Jesus, your loving son. Come with us, Mary. Jesus extends an invitation to us because he knows life is full of challenges, not to forget endless burdens. Some burdens we find unbearable. So what burdens are you carrying? How long have you been carrying them? Are you carrying them alone? This week, Jesus gives us an amazing invitation. An invitation we cannot resist in these troubled times because he knows what happens to a troubled heart and how pain, sorrow can break us. 
from his meek and gentle heart. Jesus says, Come to me if you are overburdened or troubled, and I will give you rest, comfort and peace. From your experience, you know that too much burdens can weigh you down. They can make us feel exhausted and drained from all our energy. The danger is that we become hopeless, completely lost, not knowing which direction to take. So stressed that we feel life has little meaning and useless. A friend in need is a friend indeed. So how many true friends do you have that is willing to journey with us when we encounter problems? Will they always be there for us, come what may? So this invitation by Jesus makes him a true friend. In Matthew's Gospel for this Sunday, Jesus calls us into his gentle and humble heart because he knows we are troubled by so many things that have overwhelmed us beyond our control. So take time and rest in Him, because Jesus offers another alternative reality, the one in which those in Christ live. By this, I mean living with the help of the Holy Spirit. And when we choose this, our orientation is towards life, peace and reconciliation with God and with others. We can do this because the Spirit dwells in us. Yes, the Spirit dwells in us. Didn't you know that? Sometimes we forget and that is why we lose the plot, our purpose in life and allow our whims and fancies, cravings and addictions and pride to rule our life and ruin it at the same time. We are not superheroes. We cannot save ourselves. We need to humble ourselves and admit that we cannot live without the help of God. And when there is no other friend or superhero to turn to, listen once again to the invitation of Jesus. He will lighten our burdens. Help us with our crosses. Calm the storm in our hearts and bring light into our darkness. Until then, we will not find rest or comfort if we exclude God from our life. Are we ready to let go and begin to trust Jesus? What is it that prevents me from getting to know God better and trusting Him like little children? Maybe it's a question of faith because we want to be certain about things. Maybe we are afraid to take the risk and trust God. If Jesus says, come unto me, I think he's trying to say that together with him, things will work out for the better. Our burdens will be lighter. Even if the burden is not removed. We continue to work hard and toil for material things and elusive dreams, comfort and wealth. We neglect and take for granted the importance of our spiritual life. And before we know it, we go through mental illness. Then our pain and stress will lead us to other outlets for relief. Soon everything begins to crumble, including our precious relationships with our loved ones. We find no time for ourselves, let alone with God. The invitation this Sunday by Jesus is irresistible. When I look at it in a different light, it speaks about Mary. Jesus was like his mother gentle and meek. And Mary was humble of heart when God lifted her 
from being a lowly handmaid. God filled her with abundant grace because God was her priority. She could overcome anything as a human being because the Spirit of God was living in her. And she tapped on the power of God when the burden of suffering and complete surrender became so difficult and unbearable. She depended wholly on God. Are we willing to follow Mary's example and say, Yes, Lord. No wonder she is also known as the mother of the church. Why? Because Mary is the mother of Christ and Christ is head of the church. Then Mary is the mother of the church. And the voice of Mary is meek and gentle because she too will say, Do whatever he tells you. So I repeat the invitation of Jesus in this devotion. Come unto me, all who are weary, and find rest for your soul. Take my yoke upon your shoulder, for I am gentle and humble of heart. Let us ask Mary to remember us in this beautiful prayer, the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that any one who fled to your protection, implored your help, and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, my Mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your sufferings, and if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. Amen. Mary, from thy sacred image, with those eyes so sadly sweet, Mother of perpetual succor, see us kneeling at thy feet. In thine arms, thy child, thou bearest, source of all thy joy.
You have given them bread from heaven. Let us pray, O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You will live and reign forever and ever. come to the end of our devotions and we've taken you almost around the church for this thank you for joining us thank you for praying and supporting us i want to see you next week enjoy the final hymn and i hope it will inspire you see you all next week we come to the end of our devotion and we know that jesus will be with us during the coming week because we all need His amazing grace. See you all next week and enjoy this hymn by Michael Biggs. Our Father, take our lives as a living sacrifice as we journey as one carry us through 
all that we do carry us through we are your people called by your name to proclaim how great is the God We are your children, we are precious in your eyes. We proclaim how great is our God. Amazing love, amazing grace. The Lamb that was slain, who gave his life for us, now sits upon his throne. Amazing love, amazing grace. The Lamb that was slain, who gave his life for us, now sits upon his throne. We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah We sing hallelujah